Um, before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out your census forms. Filling out the census is one small but very important thing everyone can do right now to help our city and our communities. If you haven't done so yet, please go to my2020census.gov and fill out the brief questionnaire. The information you provide affects funding for health care, transportation, your local schools, and many other needs. Remember, my2020census.gov. It is safe, secure, and confidential. Now let's get started. First, a little background on Dr. Samuel Berg, who took the photos in the Berg collection. Berg was born in New York City in 1898, the son of Ukrainian Jewish immigrants. His father, a pharmacist, moved the family to Newark when Sam was a child, opening a drugstore on what is now West Market Street. Sam was the oldest of three children. His younger brother, Mo Berg, was a professional baseball player who also worked as a spy for the U.S. government. Dr. Samuel Berg had a private practice in Newark for 60 years. He led a team of medical researchers into Nagasaki after the second atomic bomb was dropped there at the end of World War II. He died in Newark in 1990. The Berg picture collection contains more than 2,800 photographs, mostly Newark street scenes, taken by Sam Berg between 1959 and 1968. Most of the photographs are scenes of residential, commercial, and industrial sites all around Newark. Rarely are people captured in the photographs. The photos were donated to the Newark Public Library after Berg's death. A few years ago, the entire collection was digitized and is now available on the library's digital archive. Berg's interest was in the built environment, structures, not people. His photos document a city at a particular point in its history, the 1960s. Much of what he photographed is now gone. That will be my focus today, showing you photos of a city that no longer exists. First, let's get started by showing you how to get to the digital archive. And for that, I have to just share my screen. Um, okay. Um, okay. Oh, I'm just doing the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm going to go to this screen, okay, and, and then, oh, okay, so now I'm going to, uh, first of all, we're going to go to the main Newark Public Library site, which is npl.org, so you enter npl.org, you can go to the new, main Newark Public Library site, and that will come up in a minute. You're now looking at my screen, okay? All right, so now once you're at this site, you want to scroll down to below the what we call the um, carousel. I'm going to go down here until there are a bunch of links down here in the bottom. There's one of them says, Introducing the Newark Public Library Digital Archive. You click on that. That will bring you to this screen, which Introducing the Newark Public Library Digital Archive. Now, we're in the process of transferring um, our material from one platform to another. I'm going to show you the old platform because the, the new platform is not complete yet. So when you're in the middle of the page, you'll see a sentence. The new site is still under construction and our old site is still viewable here. To see what I'm going to show you today, you click on the here, which is the, old, the link to the old site, the old digital archive site. And that will bring you to this site. Okay, this is, this is the main page of, our, of the digital archive, or the Newark Public Library digital collections. Um, so now, to get to the Berg photos, what you do is you click on Explore Collections. And then a few down here, they're arranged alphabetically, and so uh, Berg Collection, Samuel Berg Collection is under B for Berg. Click on Samuel Berg Collection. And it will come up eventually. Takes a little while. There we go. Okay, so this is the main page of the Berg collection, which is a page within the digital archive. Um, so now my colleague, Beth Zach Cohen, has designed a very nice introductory page on the Berg archive where it shows where you can click on different things that are in the collection. So you can click on residential. If you click on residential, it'll bring up pictures of houses in the archive. And here are some uh, pictures of some of the houses in the collection. 
Okay, if you click on one of these, it'll give you more detail on that particular photo. So you'll have a, a page with the, the photo, and then below the photo, you'll have some information on what it is. It'll tell you when it was taken. It'll tell you what it is. Uh, the titles were titles that Berg gave you all the photos, so the descriptive about where they were taken. Uh, this is the southeast corner. This picture is the southeast corner of Roosevelt and Sussex Avenues. Uh, Coit Memorial is on the right. This photo was taken in 1959. Um, there are some keywords that we assigned here. It describes what the physical item is that we digitized. This is a, um, the, this is a print that was four and a half by 3.25 inches. So that's what, if you looked at the, um, the actual physical item, that's what it would look like um, be, before we digitized it. Uh, and then there's some other, there are some subject headings here and there's some other descriptive information about the item. If you go back to the main, if you click on each one of these, you get a similar page. You get the image at the top and then you get some descriptive information underneath it, okay? Anyway, so now we go back to the main, um, back to the main bird collection page. So that's, uh, so you can pick on, you click on res residential to see residential photos, commercial um, to see commercial buildings. Um, you can see factory sites, you can see old buildings, you can see schools, click on schools and see some of the schools that are available here. This shows some schools that show up. Uh, some parks. Okay. And some other things. Okay, so you can just this is this just describes the collection and different types of um, photos you can see, photos of different types of buildings that you can see. I've picked out a few buildings, a few um, few pictures that I just want to show you. I'm not going to go through um, searching for each one of them. I already picked them out, and so I will just show you them separately. I have them saved in a folder on my computer. So we'll go to the Let's first of all look at this bill. We'll look at this photo first. So this is, I'll, I'll go back to what I was saying before. Um, this is uh, 75 East Park Street in 1961. Um, 70, this section of East Park Street no longer exists and this building no longer exists. It is now underneath what is now the Seton Hall Law School building. So that's one of the images I wanted to show you. Do, do you see that, Beth? Does everybody see that? Yes, we're good now. Okay, so this, this building is the old Barringer High School, as I was saying. Um, Mr. Edelstein's um, students uh, won't recognize this building even though they go to, they go to school at, at Barringer High. This is the old Barringer High, which was torn down in the mid 60s and replaced with the building that's there now. That's the building that they go to. This was the old Barringer High. This photo was taken in 1962. This building, uh, was this photo was taken in 1964. It shows the corner of Hamilton and Columbia streets. Um, both of those streets still exist, but they no longer intersect. This, this site that we're looking at now is in the middle of what is now Mulberry Commons, a park alongside um, the uh, Newark Warehouse building, which is currently being renovated to house the uh, Mars Wrigley Company. That's this building here, this building in the background here. Um, this, this is um, Hamilton Street, this is Columbia Street, and then this, the, um, this is a railroad siding, the old Central Railroad, which is a railroad that doesn't exist anymore, and these tracks no longer exist, but there used to be a, a railroad siding that went through here, railroad tracks that went through here, and there were streets that went through here. This is now a park. And um, the only part of these tracks that still exist are, is a, an overpass over McCarter Highway, uh, which they are going to be turning into a walkway eventually. That's the plan at least. Uh, but the, the part that we're seeing here no longer exists. Another part of uh, another thing from this, the old city that no longer exists. This is uh, the corner of Morris and Cabinet Streets. Ta this photo was taken in 1959. Um, this street corner still exists, but these, none of these buildings are still in existence. Uh, this is now in, in the middle of what is now the Rutgers Medical School campus. Uh, it's, you know, off of 12th Avenue um, and um, east of Bergen Street. 
if you know where that is, that's uh, where they have a lot of modular buildings and a lot of newer modern buildings for the college, for the medical school. That was, uh, these were here in 1959 when this photo was taken, but a few years later, in the mid to late 60s, all these buildings were torn down. This was a really controversial urban renewal project in the late 60s. Uh, it was one of the incidents that led to the Newark Rebellion in July of 1967. Um, Mayor Adonisio, the mayor of Newark at the time, was offered, um, uh, he had offered uh, the medical school 150 acres in the center of Newark to move from Jersey City to Newark, but this was 150 acres occupied by people's homes and businesses and you know, buildings just like this, and so a lot of people were not happy about that, and it was one of the um, one of the incidents that led to the Newark Rebellion. Um, after the Newark Rebellion, they actually downsized the plans for the campus and it was eventually downsized to about 83 acres rather than the 150 acres originally um, proposed. Okay, so this is a corner that no longer exists. It's a corner of New and Orleans Street, or Orleans Street, taken in 1960. Um, this street the Orleans Street no longer exists. It goes through the center of what is now the Rutgers Newark campus. Uh, this this was uh, near where, um, if you if any of you know the Rutgers Newark campus, where Dana Library is. Dana Library was very close to where this photo was taken. This was right in the middle of that campus there, with all those uh, you know 1960s buildings. That was a big urban renewal project in the mid 60s. Not quite as controversial as the medical school, but it was um, somewhat controversial as well. This is the corner of Ferry and Union Street with the Central Railroad tracks in the background. Um, for those of you who know the Ironbound, uh, this, on this corner there is now a Walgreens at 61 Ferry Street today. And there is a Walgreens um, with a little parking lot in front of it. This, is, this means a lot to me because it's right around the corner from where I live. But this is um, the Central Railroad tracks are in the background. They went right through here and there was a, to the left, there was a, st there was a stop on, um, on uh, Prospect Street. Uh, there was a Prospect Street Railroad station, but this, this is all gone now. This is Founders Park, a park that no longer exists. Uh, where what, you're, what we are looking at now is today the tracks of the um, Newark Light Rail in front of NJ Pack, and part of this is the um, NJ Pack lawn. This is Saybrook Place, which is a street that no longer exists. It ran through the center of what is now New the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. This is McCarter Highway over here, and this monument. Um, disappeared for many years after they began building NJ Pack. They took it down and it was moved to a city rail yard. Um, and one of the gentlemen in the room today, I think he's still there, is Guy Sterling, who actually found this monument in the park, in that um, city rail yard. And it was later brought back and put back up on the grounds of the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, not far from here, you know, but maybe a few hundred yards to the left. But this is what it looked like in 1961 when this photo was taken. This was Founders Park. This is the old Westinghouse building, uh, which was torn down around 2007. It was the Westinghouse factory. Uh, this is Lackawanna Place or Lackawanna Avenue. Um, and if around these buildings here on the right, um, is the is the what is now called Broad Street Station. Uh, you can't see it here. This is an open plaza today where these buildings are and this is an empty field where the Westinghouse building was, but this is what it looked like in uh, 1959 when this photo was taken. This is uh, Mulberry and Edison Street in 1961. It's actually Mulberry Street in front of where the hockey arena is today. These buildings over here on the left where um, the hockey arena is there today. And this down here, you can see in the distance, this is where Edison Place crosses it. This was taken from the Central Railroad tracks, which used to cross uh, or go above uh, Mulberry Street. This is Mulberry Street in front of us. It doesn't look anything like that. It's much wider today. Uh, the hockey arena is here. There's a park on the right. Uh, it's very different today. This is the old First Church Cemetery uh, photo taken in 1959, not long before they um, basically plowed this under, dug up most of the bodies, and replaced it with a parking lot. Uh, but this is the back. This was the back of the old first. Um, this was the back of old first cemetery. Um, today, uh, the hockey arena is on top of this. The Prudential Center is on top, on top of this. 
Um, this is a firehouse that was at the corner of Mulberry Street and Lafayette Street. Uh, this is now also under Mulberry Commons. Uh, and there's actually a parking lot at that corner, I believe. But this was a fire house that stood in, th I think until about 2006 or 2007, it was torn down when the uh, hockey arena was being built. This, remember I, I showed you the picture of the cemetery before? This was the parking lot that replaced the cemetery. This, the picture of the cemetery was taken in 1959. This photo was taken in 1961. Uh, this is now underneath the Prudential Center, underneath the hockey arena. You can see this church is still there. That's old first church. This building is still there too. That is the, um, it, today it's the Indigo Hotel. It was the National First Bank, I think was the name of it. These buildings along Mulberry Street or, or along Edison Place rather are all gone. But this, this, this uh, parking lot is also gone. It's been replaced by the, ho was replaced by the hockey arena. This is um, back to the uh, near the lot near the uh, Broad Street Station. This is Broad Street, the west side of Broad Street near the Lackawanna tr tracks. These tracks over Broad Street are these tracks that come from the Broad Street Station and go uh, toward um, Sea Caucus and New York. Um, and this photo was taken in 1959. All of these buildings here are now gone. And that was just a very quick look at some photos that I wanted to show you. Uh, I just, I basically, I wanted to show you, I, I saw that a lot of people were uh, making comments. I didn't have really a chance to respond to any, I can't really see the comments when I'm showing the building. So, I mean, I'm trying to see if, um... oh, okay, so Beth, Beth, you've been answering some of the questions. That, that's my colleague, Beth Sacco, and we may have been answering some of the questions. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay. So um, that was just a, it's a, just a very quick look at the bird collection and some of the old photos that are there. Uh, these are available free um, on the digital archive. Anyone can look at these at any time, anyone with an internet connection. And so, uh, so you were welcome to go look at more photos. There are lots and lots of photos. All you gotta do is uh, pull up one of those screens. And if you know, you try to get, you can do, you can search for the name of the street you're looking for. If you're looking for like the corner of, um, like Walnut and Pacific, maybe you can enter Walnut Pacific, and you can bring up the um, and you can uh, and you can pick up some you can um, bring up some photos of that area, and you'll see what it, what things looked like in the, the early to mid '60s. These photos again were all taken between 1959 and 1968, so they show the city at a very specific period of time, uh, and um, much of what they show, as I said before, is gone now. Okay. So that's, that's basically my introduction to the Berg collection and my invitation to you. Um, my invitation to you is uh, to go look yourself. Uh, let's see. Um, Mark, I, uh, or you, oh yeah, uh, somebody's asking why did he stop photographing in 1968? I don't know. I, I'm not sure why he stopped, um, but uh, all the, fo the photos seem to end in 68 and they actually begin to, the bulk of the photos seem to be more from like the early to mid 60s too. So I think he just began photographing less as the years went on. Because th there are some photos from 67 and 68 there, but more of them were from an earlier period. So maybe he just lost interest in the project and he began photographing, uh, photographing less. Um, he did, oh, and someone asked if, did he have any other photographic interests other than Newark? Yeah, a small number of the photos in the collection are not of Newark. There are some photos of East Orange. There are some photos of other parts of New Jersey. The vast majority were taken in Newark, but there are some that are not. There are some that are not that were not taken in Newark. So um, if you look through the, if you look through the collection, you'll see that, that there that there are some photos that were not in Newark. Okay. Anybody else have any question? Any other questions? You can write them in the chat box if you do. Okay. And okay, so um, thank you for joining me today on the tour of Newark that once was, but is no more. Uh, I'll just tell you about a few other programs we have coming up. On Thursday at one, I'll be sitting down with two genealogists to talk about how they use census information in their research. That's Thursday at one o'clock p.m. on Zoom. Also on Thursday at 7 p.m., we will be bringing you a one-man show from Jesse Bernstein the grandson of a man who was the personal physician and good friend of Newark mobster Longies Willman in the 1950s. Ethics of the Fathers, 
where explores Jewish identity and family relationships in a funny, moving way. That is Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. on Zoom. This is a, a rebroadcast of something we did last week. Well, not really a rebroadcast. We had ran into technical difficulties last week when we did, so we're trying it again on Zoom rather than Facebook Live. Um, for these and other events, please check out the calendar on the Newark Public Library website, npl.org. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you for being here today. <laughs>